so i think i am live right now okay so today's part is on the linearization of dynamic equations and the linear dispersion relation so someone just called me and said that sir whether we are available or not hello is there anybody well in mathematics and of course in physics linearization that means something making something power to the power 1 unit so someone is saying that uh, only the banner is coming is the first page available right now well let me just for you uh, let me just share this thing No, that concurrent viewers. Okay. Well, I'm sharing the link. Please check once again. So, in mathematics and of course in physics, linearization is finding the linear approximation. This is a linear approximation is the first order correction term to a function at a given point. We all know something about this Taylor series. Hmm? Taylor series, the linear approximation we use to do, uh, for instance, y at x is equal to some value is equal to y at x is equal to 0 plus dy dx. That is what we do it plus a, some higher order term d2y dx2. So, someone is saying that it is not audible. <coughs> Sorry. Let me check. 20 concurrent viewers. Okay, fine. So, we use a small perturbation. What is a perturbation? A perturbation means a slight disturbance to an this thing to an uh, equilibrium value. So, suppose this f is a variable or a function. Now, that function is equal to the equilibrium value plus the this is epsilon now i'll tell you epsilon is often called as the perturbation parameter or the smallness parameter now these are the higher first order perturbation this is the second order perturbation and so and so goes here epsilon is known as the smallness parameter we also call it a perturbation parameter that is used to find different order equations from both sides that is f0 f1 Excuse me, I have just written it F0, F1. Hmm. So, it is underscore. It will. So, these are the perturbed values. Higher the numbers, that is F2, F3, F4, they become more and more smaller. That is more and more negligible. Suppose we consider, consider an electron in motion. Okay. So, the continuity equation for an electron fluid is something del and del t plus divergence of n into v is equal to 0. We assume that there is no 
uh, there is no source term on the right hand side. The momentum equation as we also find from our previous expression uh, lecture that it is given as some convective derivative is equal to electric field only here the electric field we have not considered the pressure, stress, magnetic field, quantum term, collision all those things are on the right hand side but for simplicity we have just taken it, uh, skipped it. The electric field as you all know can be written as del phi del x, del phi del x because minus del phi del x rather we would say that or if we get into three dimension it is minus of gradient phi or grad phi. Now you see I have just written here nj uj because for the multi component plasma it can be electrons, ions, positrons. So I just for the generalization I have just put it here. Hmm. So it is nj here you find suppose the density the density is equal to 1 plus nj0 epsilon plus epsilon square nj2. So, this why I have put it 1 because it was the n0 term when normalized with the when it is normalized with the um, equilibrium value then it becomes 1 suppose n is 0 by n is 0 it is equal to 1 for the system we consider as the electrostatic case. So, the initial velocity is 0 and for our consideration for simple case we consider initial potential to be also 0, but there can be a, a streaming motion that is a streaming motion means that the particles can move as a fluid. For instance, suppose it is a in a gutter, water is flowing down and there you put some small uh, paper pieces. Now, the paper pieces have their mutual movement and as a whole it is also moving down the stream. So, it is the streaming velocity in such a case this on be 0 it would be u0 and phi suppose I give it under an external electric field so it is phi 0 and these are the part of terms. Now coming to the next thing if we put those part of quantity suppose n u and in this momentum equation you see here we have a product of in the continuity equation n into v. So, if I put the series kind of thing for n, n and v, v, v uh, in place of v we put u. So, n into u we get a product kind of thing like this. Del del t, the continuity equation takes the form like this. It is the n in the series form, the expanded form. It is the density in the expanded form. It is the velocity in the expanded form. Similarly, for the momentum equation, you will also find that it is the momentum, that is the velocity and it is also the velocity. Now, I have made some error. If I put it 1, for the, here it should be u0 and it should be also u0. I made a slight mistake because I, not a mistake, basically we have put it equal to the normalizing velocity with which we are normalizing. So, it becomes 1. And on the right hand side, we find that we are normalizing the potential with some values of potential itself. So, it becomes 1. Basically, it can be 0 as well. Now, coming this to taking all those and the Poisson equation, you see, Poisson equation is given as. Now, why did I put the ions in its equilibrium value? Because the ions are being bulky. They do not vary much. Because some bulky matter, if they are in their Mm, position and there is no such variation. So, we can consider that the part of value is so small that it can be taken equal to the uh, it can be taken equal to the equilibrium value. Now, if we have normalized the density with n is 0 and the velocity of Cs then you see as I have said earlier n is 0 and this is a normalized quantity. It can be 0, it may not be 0 depending upon the problem. Similarly, we have our something for a phi. Now, at equilibrium, if the electron and the ion density are same, the quasi neutrality criteria that is n is 0 is equal to n is 0, from that we just cancel out. So, for a two system, two species plasma that is containing electrons and ions, 
it's not a big problem. But suppose there are hot electrons, cold electrons and their ratio that is their proportion of hot and cold electrons are not as same. So, a bigger equation would come then we will have a series of hot electron series there should be suffix NC0, NEC, NEC then another would be in hot, uh, hot another series for a hot electrons and of suppose we put positrons and so 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 those will be bigger exercise. We are not going in detail because we are just learning it and try to learn with a simple example. Now you see as we know that whenever it is in motion every motion can be considered to be a part of a simple harmonic motion or a wave motion. Now who told it because you see in every circuit the electrical circuit or electronic circuit where you suppose in a electronic circuit where you have an oscillator you convert a DC to an AC how does it happen there are certain noises that is unwanted movement unwanted frequencies generated the electron revolves around the atom so what happens the electrons speed up or slow down so an additional circular motion can be added considered now some of these motions gets amplified and they by our amplification amplifier mechanism they come out with an amplified AC so from an DC and AC if you want to study it just check in the internet something about thermal noise Johnson noise if you can check it you will be understood. Now, coming to this discussion now the density is somehow it is a, it is the amplitude part this is the phase part so density is also varying like a wave like this velocity it is also varying with some same kind of phase as the potential so this is the crudest linearizing condition i won't say crudest rather i would say that it is more interesting assuming the linearization phase so you see if we take the derivatives with time and space that is derivatives with time means ddt derivative with space means ddx now going to this thing if we del del t of n we find you see minus i omega del del x of n i k now you see corresponding to this differential function operator del del t or del del x we are getting the same function multiplied by a constant minus i omega plus i k so these are the eigenvalues these are the eigenvalues Okay, so we will be checking it or we will be just in future while linearizing this ddt we can just substitute with minus i omega ddx ik. Now in a three dimensional case there will be del del y del del z and accordingly that will be ikx iky where I am talking about the suffix kx ky kz that is or k1 k2 k3 as you call it. Now if we just someone just text me yes someone is asking for a live later I will be coming later fine so if we replace the differential operators with corresponding eigenvalues now you see we remove that momentum equation take for the momentum equation we are just moving that ddt with minus i omega and ddx by plus i k dd x by i k. Now we get a series of expression corresponding with different powers of epsilon. You see here is epsilon 1, here is also epsilon 1 corresponding. Now why did I put it 0 here? Because it was a constant velocity. When I take a derivative of a constant that becomes 0. So the first term becomes 0. But why did I keep it here? Because it was not under ddx operator. So it was as a product. So it comes out. So we get sets of equation corresponding to different epsilon. Now what is epsilon? Once again it is a smallness parameter. So you see this is the first set of equation. This is the second epsilon this like this. Like this we can also do for the continuity and the Poisson equation. Fine. Now retaining only the first order equations in epsilon. Why? Because we want to retain the linear terms and that is why what we will get is linear dispersion relation. 
if you get the retain the epsilon terms linear terms so by elimination and substitution you see there were three variables u n and phi and there were three equations continuity equation momentum equation poisson's equation so three equations and three variables so we can just solve three of our them and then we will get a relation with dealing with omega and k that is omega is a frequency and k so what are these frequencies and, uh, and wavelength or wave numbers these were corresponding to the initial perturbation that you assume that means since these are variables they will come as online and they will come as our dispersion relation omega as a function of k the linear dispersion relation therefore supplies us with a lot of information of the system it supplies with how the wave behaves at different wavelengths. Suppose different wavelengths have got different behaviors, much like we study in optics. Okay, so that is one. Now let me give you some examples. In one of our papers, you will find Chandra et al. astrophysics, which I have already submitted, and I will also put it in your lecture uh, material. The linear dispersion relation comes like this. You see, these are constants. This delta, FEH, H, FEC, these are all constants. You will find this expression. In another of our paper, you see, H is a constant. So, we get a mode like this, omega as a k square plus k to the power 4 order. So, this kind of equation. Now, this kind of curves come and from these curves, we can just plot whether how it is behaving, you know, an acoustic mode. An ion acoustic mode is starting from 0. So, it is an acoustic mode, it is starting from 0. So, it is because of ion acoustic mode. If it were plasma mode, ion uh, or electron plasma mode, it would have started from some finite value here. Okay. Just we'll, well, in our next classes, we will just do this and we will understand. Now, let me give you an assignment. These are the three component plasma. It is a hot electron, cold electrons and hot electron, cold electrons corresponding continuity equation, hot electron, cold electron corresponding momentum equations and the closed closer properties that I have uh, told you in the previous lecture that this equation is a Poisson's equation. You see there are delta, delta H. So, these are all constants as for, as for your exercise you can just consider them to be constants. But these are the ratio of the ion density to the hot electron, cold electron density and delta is the density of equilibrium hot electrons concentration to equilibrium cold electrons concentration. So, these are all constants okay G A, G C, chi, H just try it as an exercise and for this the perturbation series that you will be using the perturbation expansion that you will be using is given like this okay NEH you see the I have taken it to be because since I have taken that uh, we have uh, normalized the densities with their equilibrium values then while the hot electron or the cold electron when divided by their equilibrium value, they will give you 1 and we have not considered streaming. So, UVH and UC0, we also considered initial 0 potential. So, phi is also 0 out here. Okay. I have written actually these are how many equations? 5 equations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, for the first equation goes like NEH is equal to 1 plus epsilon NEH1 plus epsilon square NEH2. UVH is equal to 0 plus epsilon uh1 plus epsilon squared uh2 so like this there are five equations uh, while writing a article writing five equations with five different numbers is a bit unsmart so we write it like this so try to attempt with pen and paper the solution that we have uh, the question that we have asked here will be given in the next solution next lecture so, in the next lecture, we will be learning about the stretching of variables and the different nonlinear equations that arise in wave plasma waves. So, that is our part. Thank you. Good night.